What's up guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're talking about 10 things you should do when you get a new camera. So I figured it'd be appropriate to do this video since there are so many cameras coming out and already have come out and more to come out later this year. So uh, this topic is going to be great if you just pick up something like this, the new Sony a7 III. We'll get to a review of this before long. It's a great camera. And these are some things that it's tempting to skip and just immediately start shooting, but I would highly recommend you run through these 10 things when you get a brand new camera. So let's jump straight in with number one, and that is to go to the manufacturer's website or use Google and get the manual in a PDF form on your phone or computer. We're going to be using this for our second step, and number two is going to be running through every single menu item on your camera. This can feel very tedious, especially on cameras like Sony or Panasonic, which is what I'm filming with, but when you do that, you will find little gems that you would have otherwise not known about. Personally, I've gone years with certain cameras not knowing of really great little features buried within the menu system. So I recommend just starting on the first tab and the first page, going through each setting and at least understanding what it is. And if you come across a setting that you just have no idea what it does, that's why you have that PDF manual. What I like to do is just hit Command F to find or search the document and enter in that setting from the camera and you'll get a nice description of what it does and then you'll be able to know whether or not to use it. And when in doubt, always turn it off. These cameras have so many settings and a lot of the time they're trying to help JPEG, raw images, um, and they'll try to fix lens problems. And often for video, we want to get as raw of a sensor readout as possible. So turning things off, if you're unsure, is usually a safe bet. And of course, you're going to want to change all the dials and knobs to video mode and turn on manual everything. Often these cameras ship with everything set to automatic, so we want to make sure that we can personally change our shutter speed, ISO, and our aperture without the camera screwing around with that stuff. Number three on the list is to customize the menus and the button layout. So many of these cameras give us a ton of control these days when it comes to how we can control the camera. Uh, Panasonic, Sony, and Canon give you a custom menu that you can add your own items to. I recommend getting all the video settings and putting it in there. That way you don't have to trudge through all the terrible uh, menus on a lot of these cameras. And then of course, being able to customize buttons. It's awesome being able to customize certain buttons to do certain things like turn on and off stabilization, uh, do punch ins or crops on the sensor, all kinds of different things like that. And of course, don't forget about your dials. Some of these cameras lets you have a lot of flexibility as to how you use them. For instance, on my GH5 and GH5S, I use the big rear dial for my ISO. Instead of having to hit the ISO, ISO button and then select a ISO setting, I can now just start spinning the wheel and completely control the ISO very quickly, which I love on Panasonic cameras. And something that goes along with that is the custom sets or custom modes that you can program on each of these cameras. Usually on the mode dial, you'll see a C1 and 2, and you can create complete profiles just for that mode dial. Often I'll use that for a slow motion mode, so I can just flip the dial here, boom, I'm in slow motion. Uh, great thing to take advantage of on these cameras. Number four on the list is to double check your SD cards. You get a new camera, you better make sure those cards are gonna work for you before you you head out and potentially do any important gig work. Often for these modern 4K cameras, you can still get away with pretty affordable cards. I really love these cards from Transcend. They're 64 gigs. I wanna say they're 30 to 40 bucks, maybe even less, and really dig them. Those are usually what I use. And then of course, for some more modern cameras that have those higher bit rates, you might need to spend a little more. And right now I'm really enjoying the Angelbird V90 cards. Those things will handle anything you throw at them and they're gonna be great as we move forward into these high bitrate cameras. The next thing to do, and number five on our list when you get a new camera, is to run an ISO test. This sounds really nerdy, but I promise you, you'll be so glad that you did this. So what is an ISO test? Well, it's really simple. Usually when I get a new camera, I'll set it up, I'll sit down in front of it, hit record, and I'll have something black, white, gray, um, a color chart is great to have, although it's not you know, necessary. And what you do is film the different ISO levels on your camera. Sit down in post and zoom in on the white 
object and the black object and look at some of the color chips on a chart or whatever you're filming. And we're going to be looking not only for noise, which can happen when you raise your ISO, but also color shifts. Often what should be straight up black with no color starts to turn a little red or magenta or blue or green. Um, so what you wanna do is just run through those settings uh, check them out on your computer and figure out what the highest you're comfortable with going is on your brand new camera. Then when you go out to shoot, you know that at ISO 6400 or 10,000, I know that's as high as I can go before I start to lose quality. Number six, and one that is a little easier to do and we often do, is to test the picture profiles or photo styles or picture styles on your new camera. Often the presets are pretty terrible, so shoot with them grade with them, do some research and see what other people recommend, and then find something that's gonna work well for you. Most of these cameras have log profiles, which I love, um, but it's also good to have kind of a, we need to post this video today, uh, picture profile where you can just pull it up, shoot with it, and really don't have to tweak things in post. Number seven is to get a camera cage, some extra batteries, and a screen protector. I love camera cages. Back when I got started, they were like 500 to 1,000 bucks. Now you can pretty much pick up a really nice custom fit cage for your camera between 50 and 100 bucks, which is awesome. I'll have some links in the description, but I'm really enjoying Small Rig. They customize uh, cages for certain cameras. So right now I have the A7 III with the form fitting cage from them. It's around 100 bucks. It's great. It protects your camera. It gives a little weight for video shooting. Not much though, which is nice. Uh, and of course you can mount anything to this, add handles, other equipment, monitors, it's great stuff. So grabbing a cage is awesome. Obviously extra batteries are nice. Usually these days you can get some pretty decent third-party batteries uh, for very low cost, especially compared to OEM. And then finally a screen protector, you know, it's kind of like your phone. If this thing breaks, that's gonna be an expensive repair. So uh, snagging a screen protector for a couple bucks and putting that on there isn't a bad idea at all. Number eight is to calibrate the monitor on your camera. Most of these cameras allow you to go in and make tweaks to the actual display of the camera. So what I recommend doing is sit down to your edit bay or wherever you edit your videos or a screen that you trust, put your camera right next to it and record a little bit, move the card into your computer and just tweak the settings on your uh, display for the camera. Usually what I try to do is turn off auto brightness changes because often these screens are fluctuating in brightness and that can really mess you up when it comes to your exposure. Check color, all that fun stuff and get this puppy ready for video. The next thing I'll usually do with a camera, and this is number nine on our list, is to test the exposure. When you shoot with different profile pictures, where your exposure should land changes. On log, it's all over the place depending on the manufacturer. And when it comes to the standard you know, picture profiles, that's completely different. So once you find something you're comfortable with and like, definitely sit down, check skin tones, check with a 18% gray card, and figure out where your exposure should roughly be landing. And uh, then when you go out to actually shoot, you know what you're working with and everything's gonna be fine. And number 10, run a mock shoot. If you do this kind of stuff for a living, you don't wanna just grab a new camera and run out and shoot with it for video. Uh, it's a really good idea to do a mock shoot. So set up a scenario like you would for a paid gig and run through it with your camera. See what the overheating might be like, the battery life, um, color, exposure, sound, all that stuff. Uh, and if you do it in a mock safe test environment, you are guaranteed to know what you're getting into when you're getting a check to go out and shoot something for someone. So that is our 10 things I recommend you do when you get a brand new camera. Stay tuned for all the crazy camera reviews coming up because there's so many being released. Uh, and if you like this video, there's a couple things you can actually do to help out. You can hit subscribe, of course, to get this stuff on the regular. If you wanna support the channel, I'll have links in the description to a couple different cameras. Those are affiliated and we get a small commission every time you use those so that's always much appreciated and of course we sell camera guides so we're going to have a guide for this camera the a7 III one for the GH5S and there's already a whole bunch of them over at the Academy so if you want to pick up some advanced pro tips for shooting video on all these amazing cameras definitely check those out so that's going to do it for this one guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video